Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. I'm hoping you're having a great day or night. We are reading the Book of Mormon. We're in Alma chapter 40, okay? This is a text of the LDS Church. Christ bringeth to pass the resurrection of all men. The righteous dead go to paradise, and the wicked to outer darkness to await the day of their resurrection. All things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame in the resurrection. So the wicked are going to wait out in darkness. Now, my son, here is somewhat more I would say unto thee, for I perceive that thy mind is worried concerning the resurrection of the dead. Behold, I say unto you that there is no resurrection, or I would say, in other words, that this mortal does not put on immorality. No, immortality, sorry. This corruption does not put on incorruption until after the coming of Christ. Behold, he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. But behold, my son, the resurrection is not yet. Now I unfold unto you a mystery. Nevertheless, there are many mysteries which are kept, that no one knoweth them save God himself. But I show unto you one thing which I have inquired diligently of God, that I might know, that is concerning the resurrection. Behold, there is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. Now when this time cometh, no one knows, but God knoweth the time which is appointed. Now whether there shall be one time, or a second time, or a third time, that men shall come forth from the dead, that matter not. For God knoweth all these things, and it sufficeth me to know that this is the case. That there is a time appointed that shall all arise from the dead. Now there must needs be a space betwixt the time of death and the time of resurrection. And now I would inquire what becometh of the souls of men from this time of death to the time appointed for the resurrection. Now whether there is more than one time appointed for men to rise in matter it not. For all do not die at once, and this mattereth not. All is as one day with God and time only is measured unto men. Therefore there is a time appointed unto men, that they shall rise from the dead, and there is a space between the time of death and the resurrection. And now concerning this space of time, what becometh of the souls is the thing which I have inquired diligently of the Lord to know, and this is the thing of which I do know. And when the time cometh when all shall rise, then shall they know that God knoweth all the times which are appointed unto man. Now concerning the state of the soul, which death and the resurrection behold, it has been made unto me by an angel, that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. Okay, so definitely a reunification pretty standard and then shall it come to pass that the spirits of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness which is called paradise a state of rest a state of peace where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow and then it came to pass that the spirits of the wicked yea who are evil for behold they have no part or portion of the spirit of the lord for behold they choose evil works rather than good Therefore their spirit of the devil did enter into them. Okay, contending that a spirit entered into them and take possession of their house and these shall be cast out into outer darkness. A devil taking possession of your house. That's quite unique. There shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and this because of their own inequity, being led captive by the will of the devil. Being led captive by the will of the devil. Now this is the state of the souls of the wicked, yea, in darkness, and a state. Huh. The state of the wicked. It doesn't sound too unique, but it just struck me about... But they're just gonna be in like, it sounds a little bit kind of like a purgatory. Now this is the state of the souls of the wicked, yea, in darkness and a state of awful fearful looking for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God upon them. 
Thus they remain in this state as well as the righteous in paradise until the time of their resurrection. Okay, so they're going to be basically there. Fiery indignation of God. Um, Palmer. Now there are some that have understood that this is a state of happiness and the state of misery of the soul. Before the resurrection was the first resurrection. Yea, I admit may be termed a resurrection, the raising of the spirit or the soul and their consignation to happiness or misery, according to the words which have been spoken. So they believe a first resurrection, where you're going to be waiting out this sort of time period to the final one, I guess. And behold, again, it hath been spoken, and there is a first resurrection, a resurrection of all those who have been, or who are, or who shall be, down to the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now we do not suppose that this first resurrection, which is spoken of in this manner, can be the resurrection of the souls of their consignation to happiness or misery. Ye cannot suppose that this is what it meaneth. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, but it meaneth the reuniting, reuniting of the soul with the body, of those from the days of Adam down to the resurrection of Christ. Now whether the souls and the bodies of those whom has been spoken shall all be reunited at once, the wicked as well as the righteous, I do not say, would it suffice that I say that they all come forth, or, in other words, their resurrection cometh to pass before the resurrection of those who die after the resurrection of Christ? Now, my son, I do not say that their resurrection cometh at the resurrection of Christ, but behold, I give it as my opinion the souls and the bodies are reunited of the righteous at the resurrection of Christ and his ascension into heaven. But whether it be at his resurrection or after, I do not say, but this much I say, that there is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and a state of the soul in happiness, or in misery, until the time which is appointed of God, that the dead shall come forth and be reunited, both soul and body, and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Yea, this bringeth about the restoration of those things which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. Yea, every limb and joint shall be restored to its body. Yea, even a hair of the head shall not be lost, but all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. And now, my son, this is restoration of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. And then shall the rights just shine forth in the kingdom of God. But behold, an awful death cometh upon the wicked. For they die as to the things pertaining to the things of righteousness. For they are unclean, and no unclean thing can inherit a kingdom of God. But they are cast out, and consigned to partake of the fruits of their labors, or their works, which have been evil, and they drink the dregs of a bitter cup. They drink the dregs of a bitter cup. There's a thing in the Quran where you drink something that doesn't taste and feel too good. So, there's like a point of purgatory or temporary eid-like place they contend. 